Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. And everyone's okay temperature-wise? Good, because I don't know how to change it. <laughs> okay, so our next guest speaker is Mary, I hope I'm going to pronounce this, Mary Griesbach. Oh, thank you. Mary Griesbach. Oh, oh, there we go. As soon as I got your name back wrong that many times before, <laughs> and it sunk in. It's so, um, Mary and I met, actually, at a networking yeah. event with uh, at Carly Thompson. That's right, through SA Woman. Through SA Woman, yeah. and we went to the Seacliff. That's right. A cafe yeah, at Seacliff. I was the connector at that time. You were the con yeah, and yeah. so I went there and we caught up, and again, the same thing. You know, you meet someone and you just connect, and then you either follow up or you don't. Mm -hmm. And if I want to follow up, I'll always, always follow up. With, if I say I'm going to follow up, I'll always follow up with that person. And, um, and Mary came along to enlighten Adelaide as well. Oh, it does sound like a bit of a promotion. Um, so she's an art therapist, art transpersonal. Transpersonal art therapist. Trans what she said. <laughs> um, and she's got an incredible story. Um, she talks about grief. She talks about all the things that people really don't want to talk about mm -hmm. and her purpose is to actually make it like normal to talk about things that we don't talk about and we haven't talked spoken about um, everything that gets pushed under the carpet because unless we actually bring that to the light we actually can't release it we can't heal it we can't do anything with it so um, Mary does this in a very beautiful way through art and expression so if you'd like to welcome Mary <laughs> and how groove is that cover yeah, that is amazing I love that cover what a fun day that was I bet so it's a bit like pro heart where he just splashes all the paint on the floor did you lie down and just go you know it was nearly like that I actually had a friend come over um I have a bit of a disagreement I'm not disagreement but a conflict of uh, creative ideas about the cover of the book with my publisher yeah and um she won because the book, the book is very much tied in with what i do as an art therapist and promoting art therapy and educating people on what it is and so forth she wanted me to have this very corporate look and i and i just said no that ain't happening <laughs> that ain't happening so um i got a friend of mine over into my studio and i said look can you just throw paint at me please <laughs> i actually did do and that. she goes what i said yeah just just look i've got mica powder i've got different colored paints and i've got you know look, just do it just throw stuff at me and like paint me and do stuff and she goes okay let's do that <laughs> so she did and i had one side of my face originally i was going to have the two sides i was going to have the really colourful, bright side, and I was going to have one side that showed depression. So this this side was all kind of like paint dripping down and looking really miserable, but it actually just made me look like an axe murderer. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so that's not really giving me a very um, you know friendly look. So maybe we won't use that side. So I just cut that side off. And we just went with that. Yeah, so it was really fun. Mm. It's, it's, it's interesting that you're actually because I do face reading, so can't help uh -huh. it. But it's interesting okay. that you actually only presented the right side, yeah. which is what we present to the world. It is yeah. uh, the left side is the inner self and the feminine, which we keep to ourselves. But this side, that is actually, interesting. So that is really fascinating. It's interesting that I chose that side yes. to be the bright side and the other side to be the negative. Yeah. So you did that without knowing that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. See, so we do things right. Because this happens live, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no pre-recording. I haven't even had a discussion no. with, with most of the speakers here today about this because I just wanted it to flow and to just be as it needs to be. So mm. thank you. And I love that. I love the colour. Mm. I love the fact that what you're actually doing is you're not hiding. You're bringing it all out yeah, and you're exactly. you showing yourself. Yeah. So that's fabulous. Beautiful dark brown eyes too, but I won't go into face reading. Thanks, That's a whole other subject. <laughs> <laughs> so art therapy. Yeah. Um, art therapy has been your go-to to for my own healing. For your own healing. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
So, shall I tell the story so, of how I got to art yes, therapy? Because that's kind of where the book is. Yes, please. So, um, I have a history of um, a lot of grief in my life through my family. We've had a lot of upheaval. Um, my world's been up to, turned upside down many, many times. And I went through a domestic violence relationship, which was quite horrific. And um, in 2005, um, don't worry, that's a happy ending. The <laughs> 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 whole room kind of went, oh, oh. 2005, my world completely shifted off its axis and I lost uh, my complete, um, I guess my compass just started to scatter gun because my son took his own life. And he was 23 years old at the time. And I literally had a complete shutdown. Um, I thought I could keep pushing through and I couldn't. And eventually I literally just stopped walking one day in the supermarket and my husband had to take me home and I slept for days. And I just went into complete and utter shutdown. Could not function. And I was uh, medicated for that. So the doctor said, you're depressed. So I'm just going to pump you full of antidepressants so that you can get back to work <laughs> um, and be normal. And of course, my definition of normal was forever changed. It wasn't the same. And so trying to get back to that normal was impossible. There was just no way it was ever going to happen. Um, and so I started to rail against the system in terms of my mental health care. And I said, this is not working for me. You keep suppressing and I feel like I need to express. Um, so long story, story short, I came around to one day, I just happened to walk into an art studio where they ran art classes that were not structured. And they were like, you just paint what you need to do and we will help you get there. And at that time, I'd had um, an incredible vision of an eagle coming to talk to me. Um, and, you know, I wasn't telling anybody about it because I thought they'd all think I was fucking mad. And so I kept this inside myself, but I knew I had to express it. And it was quite a profound experience. It was almost, it was a very sacred sort of encounter that I had with this eagle. And I needed to get it out. So my very first painting was two metres wide and a metre and a half tall and it was at this eagle speaking to me. It took months and months and months and much longer than it actually needed because I was processing throughout all of this painting. It wasn't actually about getting the perfect eagle. It was about all the stuff that was going on in my subconscious while I was doing this painting. And one of the instructors there was learning to be an art therapist and she said to me Mary you really need to do this for yourself you need to become an art therapist and I'm like oh, I don't know. and she said no really seriously because you get it you really get it and um and you've been through it and so I held that with me for about eight years I couldn't afford to do the course at that time it wasn't covered by any kind of government assistance and I didn't have the funds and this is one of the things that happen when you have a major event in your life. Often one person drops away and can't support the same financial burden that they were before so you come down to one income and so I couldn't afford to do anything like that. Then um, in 2016 I discovered that it was covered under the VET health scheme. That's it, I'm doing it. Now it's for me and it's the best decision I ever made because now I'm in a position of strength. Mm -hmm. I'm in a position where I've been through the ordeal. I've come out like the hero's journey, been through the, whole, the ordeal, come out the other side, found my mentors and have now become my own hero and I can then help people, other people walk the same path. Mm -hmm. So that's my mission is to move people away from the Western medical interventions for depression or for trauma or any kind of mental health issue that we have where it's all about suppression and saying that doesn't work it doesn't work to suppress it only works to express and really stare your demons in the face and have the guidance of someone else to walk the walk with you a little bit like a shaman just being just being there supporting you through the process and trusting that the ability to heal 
from within. It's in all of us. We can all do it. We're just told we can't. So that's my mission. Who's <laughs> feeling that? Yeah. yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Mm. That just is made my heart pop, really pop. So um, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for sharing that. And my God, to be able to do art therapy. I hadn't, I've never even thought about doing art mm. as a therapy. Has anybody else here done art therapy? Yeah, you, you, okay. And I do doodle and stuff like that, you know, when you when you start to get creative, but how fantastic that, yeah. um, that you're doing this. So the crea Creative Rebel is the name of your book. Yes. Yeah, you do look a bit like a rebel. <laughs> you do look a bit like an Aphrodite goddess. Yeah, so I'm a little bit naughty. <laughs> so how did you, then, go about, when, when, when did the idea come to you when you wanted to write your book, when you had this idea in your mind, and how okay. did it come about? I've, I've wanted to write a book for many, many years, yeah. because I know, I've always known I had a story to tell. There's been a lot that has happened. Um, the other people need to know that it happens to other people too. It's mm -hmm. they're not alone in, in their journey, and but I never knew how to go about it. Having now a business in art therapy, I had a reason to write. In I wanted to exp I wanted to explore that whole concept and show people that there is a way forward, um, and I wanted to give people actual steps that they can follow to get from deep trauma to analysing how they are being reactive, how they can set their boundaries, how they can grow, how they can re-look at this new paradigm that they're living in after a major tragedy or a major loss and reconfigure their life to fit. And so to, I wanted to be able to give people step-by-step -step ways to do that. Um, and I told my story in the beginning of the book, so the first 10,000 words of the book is me blabbing on about the crap that I've lived through. And then the second half of the book is how um, it refers back to that and saying, you know, this is what I've learned. This is, and these are the lessons. Yeah. So I just did not have a formula for that. I knew that kind of somewhere in there there was a book. I just didn't, oh, I had no idea how to actually get all of that information out there. Yeah. So um, at one of your events, the lovely um, Women in Business Adelaide events, I met the lovely Shilpa, mm -hmm. who is a book writing coach. Okay. And she said, you know what, I do what you need me for. <laughs> so I said, okay. And um, it cost me some money, but she does uh, the book coaching thing, but she ties it in with the business plan and all that sort of stuff, so that the book can actually bounce off your business and vice versa and build it up into a movement. So, Great. you know, so she, I thought, well, okay, she's got the formula. She knows. Yes. <laughs> so um, I, I said, okay, I need you. And so she really helped me nut out the formula. But um, as the name suggests, I'm not very good at sticking to rules. So <laughs> she had this really fantastic foolproof formula, which I did not follow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so how did she cope with you? Oh, well, we had our moments. We had our moments. But she's adorable. She's, and she's very calm. Yeah, totally. And she would just say to me, you know, Mary, you know, your inner saboteur is <laughs> happening today. I said, like, yes, I know, I know. But she, but she did help because she gave, she did give me a formula. We used Evernote. I know Jessica used Word. I used Evernote, which was really good for me to lay out the plan, the chapter plans, and we could add chapters in and move them around and so forth in Evernote, get it all happening, and then just transfer it across to Word. So that became my go-to for that. Um, and she had a really good format for me to follow. <laughs> which I started to follow, um, but then I said to her, you know what, I, I, I just have to, before I can follow the plan, I have to just get it out. So I just brain dumped, basically, and it just blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I sent it to her and she said, yeah, you have to write this, this is, this is, this is the book. 
you, you know, forget the plan, this is the book. <laughs> So that's kind of how that happened. Okay. And then um, when I got found myself getting stuck, um, she said, just ask, ask a question. What does somebody want to know? What is it that you're trying to say? And what is the question they would ask of you for that? And that actually really helped because I would start, I would literally write the question. You know, um, why is it I'm best triggered by? Mm -hmm. And then I would write an answer and then I would configure that into um, how, how the psyche works and how the left and the right brain and how the trauma from childhood and, blah, 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 and I would work out some kind of format that I could write to answer that question. So, yeah, so in the end I ended up starting every chapter with a question and quite often I deleted the question after I'd written the chapter. But it was, it was the ticket that got me off to starting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just reminded me, um, mm -hmm. don't they say that when you're writing a book, you actually write kind of the synopsis or the, 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 yeah. the summary first yeah. and then go back? <coughs> so you write kind yeah, of, the kind end of. And, and, and you have like a, a positive thing yeah. and then a negative thing and a positive thing and kind of sandwich that? Or yeah, that not? sounds very orderly yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit too, it's a bit too so yeah, I, it's true. I mean, what you say is true. You do, you do need to have. Yeah. So what I ended up doing was, okay, I'm going to structure it around the hero's journey because I feel like I've been through a bit of the hero's journey myself. So I'm going to structure the book around the hero's journey. And then I'm going to say to people, how can they be the hero in their life and how can they incorporate that those principles into their life. So it's loosely, very loosely structured around the hero's journey. So I mapped out the hero's journey steps and then I wrote appropriate chapters for each of those steps um, that can help people move from dysfunctional to... Normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have a, there's one chapter that says dysfunction has a function. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because, you know, I just don't believe that what we call function, what functional is, is really functional. <laughs> we're functional, we're considered in our society to be functional if we're earning money, spending money, you know, or supporting somebody in doing those things. Like it's, it's an economic function. It's not a true functional. We're, trun we're functional when we're true to ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And um, so I, I challenge a lot of the uh, mental health um, mm -hmm. norms. Um, and you know, I'm probably, I'm probably ruffling a few feathers in the board oh, in terms of you know what I think is appropriate to help people through this time. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just go back to Evernote? So what is Evernote? Okay, so Evernote is like oh, I don't have a plan. Evernote. Evernote is a and it's an app. Okay. It is software, I guess, but it's it, you can download it as an app. I use it on my iPad. I wrote my whole book on my iPad, which most people go, well, ah, um, I, because the laptop was just annoying me. So I, I started using my And the iPad's easier to pull it out wherever I want it and just, you know, type it in. And Siri's great because I can, I can say, Siri, new note. I want to say this. Blah, 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 blah. So the iPad was good for consolidating stuff. But Evernote is a platform a bit like iCloud. It's like OneNote as well. Yeah, it's a bit like OneNote, OneNote yes. Yeah. So, and, and you can kind of sync it across devices. So if I go on one device, it pops up on the other device. So it was very <coughs> interchangeable. Okay. And I can you can consolidate all yeah. of your stuff in a... In a like an online filing cabinet. Yeah, yeah. No, a note is like That's a new document yeah. and then you can create folders and it's like a little and you can yeah. just snip things yeah. and add little things. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 And just move things around yeah. and so on. So it's a really good tool for yeah. organising your books and organising your notes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, and how long did your book take? A lifetime. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, from the day I started to actually commit to writing to the day I finished was eight months. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. That's, that's really Did you really start as soon as you met Shilpa? Yeah. Wow. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
but you did but say all your life so it's kind it's of been, been there. festering and brewing yes. in there for quite some time so i yes. had the i i already knew what i wanted to say i just didn't know how to say it <laughs> and was there any fear that came up because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure all of us really want to write that book don't we and we've got no fear whatsoever so much fear look imposter syndrome all of that stuff <laughs> like it was yeah so much so I, I started writing and I was like oh who the hell am I to be yeah. honestly you know an expert surely I don't know enough yet yeah you know but then I had to just embrace, and this is where Shirakul was really helpful for me because she was able to say to you, you are an expert because you've lived it. You've got the lived experience and that makes you an expert and that's what you're writing about. So, and I thought, okay, yeah, all right then. So I'll write another little bit. But yes, that plagued me throughout the process and it still plagues me now. <laughs> but you've done it. But I've done it. And you should be proud of yourself. Yes, and I am proud of it. I am very proud of it because it's, it's my heart on a platter. Yes. It's um, it's exposing some stuff that even my family didn't know. Um, I had to tell parts of my life that nobody knew I had been through, and it was that were really deeply traumatic. And um, it's hard to do that. It's hard to say, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there and we can turn it into. So. Vulnerability is where the gold lies. Yeah, yeah? 100%. And, and you you want, did that. As Renee Brown says, you know, be vulnerable to rise strong. And yeah. that's what we need to do. Did you piss any people off when you did that? Um, like in terms of uh, partners or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, no, no, it was, it was really, really interesting because when I didn't name names, yeah. I just said there were people in my life who... Mm -hmm, and I'm sure that there are people who impacted my life in a negative way that are no longer in my life and if it pisses them off or put on them, whatever. Yeah. That means they've read it. Yeah. Thanks for your 20 You know, thanks for the <laughs> <laughs> because, because part of part of my learning experience was understanding that um, I have had toxic people in my life, but they don't have to impact me anymore. Mm -hmm. And if they are unhappy about what I say about them, then they need to look at themselves, not at me. Yeah. It's there. So you stuff. didn't sense, I mean, other than leaving names out, you didn't feel you needed to censor something to protect other people, like to still get your story point across? Yes, I did. I did. And I haven't told my whole story. Yeah. Mm. I have edited. It's strongly edited. Yeah. It's given, and I didn't want to. I actually didn't want my whole story to be just like, <laughs> for people to read. Oh, I think she's had a shit point. Oh, God, I, can't, I, don't, I can't take any more of this. <laughs> Is it safe that you left the bad part out? I left, I gave examples, I've given examples of all those phases in my life, but I haven't told a blow by blow description of everything. No, did you say in the book that there were worse things, but you haven't put them in? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I have, I have said in there this is an edited yeah. version because, I mean, I, there's just no way. I mean, we're talking about 50 years of experience here. We can't put that all in a, in a little book. And, and, People don't want to hear every little conversation I had, and every, you know. But I, what I've done is I took um, some really key moments and I've explained them in detail so that people can get a real sense of what I was going through and in that period of my life. Yeah, exactly. Paint the picture. See what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> She's good. She's She's good. Very good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you. Any questions for me? Can we all relate? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you going to ask, do you teach workshops on art therapy? I do. Okay. Yeah, so I, I run, I have a studio in Seacliff, which is um, available to rent to other therapists, same with the type of work I do. So, you know, hit me up if you need a space for a workshop. Um, I how run many people, sorry, how many people can work So seated around tables for workshops, for arty type workshops. Yeah. So it can accommodate up to 16. Okay. For seated like this, um, I don't know, 30? Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I don't guess. So we've got 30 here. So, oh, easily 30, yeah. easily 30. Yeah. It's a big space. Okay. Um, so, uh, and I run workshops. Uh, art therapy workshops and I also work, run introduction to art therapy workshops so that people can come and learn what art therapy is about because I think a lot of people have a misconception about what 
um, mm. therapy actually is. Mm -hmm. um, it's not all just sitting around doing mandalas and singing kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have any kind of artistic ability. No, no. And this is one of the reasons I wrote the book. I wanted to debunk some myths about what art therapy is. And the biggest question, the most common questions I get are, is it just for kids? Is, do I need to know how to do art? And, um, you know, why would it benefit me? I can just do that at home. So here are the, here's the answers to those. No, it's not just for kids. It's different for kids. What we do with art therapy with kids is a very different type of art therapy because their cognitive function is different. So the, the frontal cortex is not yet developed enough to manage some of the deeper issues in the same way. They express, they don't have the um, emotional literacy to be able to express in the same way. So we deal with them differently. Adults, um, we work very much with the subconscious. So in transpersonal art therapy, which is what I do, we work a lot with bypassing the limbic system, which is the alarm system of the brain, so that you're not triggered until you're triggered. <laughs> so it, it removes some of the blocks that we have. So in conversation or narrative therapy, you've, we've all said it, haven't we? Like, I don't have words to describe this. Mm -hmm. Art therapy eliminates that problem mm -hmm. because it's all in the art. Mm -hmm. So the art becomes a third person in the room mm -hmm. and we talk through the art so it's an indirect approach. So it's not quite so confronting and you're not just re-traumatising by retelling. So that's one part of it. The other part, uh, the other question about do I have to be good at art is no, because it's got nothing to do with the product. It's got nothing to do with producing a beautiful work of art. It's to do with what's going on in your mind as you're using the different mediums. And in the experience, the art therapist is able to tell you which mediums to use and will give you direction about what to do in order to bring out the desired result. So, no, a squiggly line is, if you can do that, you can do art therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people literally throwing paint around the room. I've had people set things on fire. I've had people... Um, Rebels, hey, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all about that catharsis. Yeah. And then analysing what's just happened to you in that process and like working through it. So there's that. And the other thing is, is it for me? Yes. In a nutshell, it's for everyone. I really honestly believe from the bottom of my heart that art therapy can tap into areas of you that you never thought were possible and are able to bring out healing from deep, deep within you that just you can't do just by talking about Wow, well, I'm, I'm sold. I'm going to go do an art Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've got some vouchers today, by the way. So um, over by the book stand, there are a free one-on-one -on -one session for anyone who wants to come along and have a go and just see what it's all about. Thank you. So, um, and I also do have the ability to take credit cards, by the way, if you do decide to buy the book, and I, so does Michelle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I'd like to say I've experienced your art therapy. Yes, you did. And it's phenomenally, amazingly, like, mm -hmm. stuff that you just would not think. And yeah. yeah. And that was, in, was a, in a circumstance which was not designed to do a very deep therapeutic thing that for was, you, but you still came away with something. It was, yeah, it was, it was very powerful. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if anyone's thinking about it, I would highly recommend <coughs> Thanks, that Thanks, Thanks for the plug, mate. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We haven't actually talked about publishing your book. <laughs> no. Well, that's where Shilpa came in handy. So um, I've heard Jessica and um, yes. Juliet, yes. sorry, and um, Michelle also talk about their self-publishing. I did things slightly differently because I've gone through Shilpa. She handled all that stuff. So that's what I paid for, basically, was for her to handle the the editors, the like juggling, you know, which publisher to go through, getting it on Amazon, getting it formatted, getting all that stuff. 
um, she handled all of that. So that's what I paid her to do basically, it was not only to help me write the book, but also to she has the contacts to get my book published. So um, it ended up being on Ingram's Spark and also on Amazon, um, but she managed that. And now I, and then she handed control over to me. So now I, I now have control of um, what happens to the book from now on. Thank you, Lisa. That's a good point. So lots of different ideas. Mm. It's like you've got to work out now which one do I get. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, don't you trip over. Yep. Right. Okay. Woof. How's everyone going? Yeah. All right. So we're ready for the last speaker of the day. Beautiful Rosalind Sansbury. Um, I've known Rosalind 11 years, and it was it's actually the reason why I'm doing what I do is because of this lady. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and she had a, a Reiki business at the top of my street called Nurturing Humanity and I kept walking past this place and I had no idea what it meant, what it was and one day I just went in there when I was feeling really, really lost and alone and I stumbled in there and I said, what do you do? She said, Reiki. I'm like, what? That Reiki? Reiki? <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea what it was. She said, look, just get on the massage table and I'll I'll show you. And um, and from there, I did my Reiki 1, I did my Reiki 2, I did my Reiki Masters. We did a lot of Thelma and Louise trips um, <laughs> all over the place. We did Angel Intuitive with Doreen Virtue in Queensland. We did, we've done so much together. So I honestly know that if I hadn't have met that beautiful Rosalind, I don't think I'd be doing all of what I'm doing, because that's where I discovered who I was through her. So I have her to thank. So thank you. So please welcome. <laughs> okay, get on the hot seat. <laughs> Can I get up there? <laughs> so I remember when Rosalind was writing this, um, and I remember how scared she was to be seen, which was also one of the reasons why I've invited her today. <laughs> There's a method in my madness. Um, she's one of the most beautiful souls I know, and Nurturing Humanity, as of yesterday, has now been changed to a new name. What's the new name? Awakening Humanity's Heart. Oh, Awakening oh, Humanity's oh, Heart. I love it. So is, it's still yeah. nurturing humanity, but there's been an expansion within me, and there's an, as there is in all of us at this time. So it's stepping into that. Beautiful. Okay. So this book, Nurturing Wisdom, Daily Inspiration to Be All You Can Be. There's a Facebook page with these daily inspirations as well that you've got, isn't there? Facebook? It's for the book itself, my main page really. So when you open up the book, there's a daily inspiration in there. So you can open it up wherever it feels right for you to open up and it gives you that guidance, that daily inspiration. Um, it is made from love, I know that. So I'm going to stop talking now, I'm going to ask this lady all about how did you get on creating this idea? Where did the idea come from for you, Rosalind? Well, it wasn't intended as a book. <laughs> My Nurturing Humanity page came about 2009, after, actually after Sue and I had been to Coolum to do an Angel Intuitive with Doreen Virtue. And when I came back, I kept having thoughts and words that over, over the years, the last, I, I'll backtrack, I'll backtrack to 2007, which was a year, a year and a half before I met Sue. Must be, a, as, as always, there's a common theme here. I was going through a marriage crisis. <laughs> 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 and it was my second 
marriage. And my first marriage, I had one daughter, um, beautiful daughter Paula, and there's a 17-year age gap between my younger two. So my second marriage was falling apart uh, for a year and a half, but I didn't address it. And then when things came to a head, I still didn't address it. But I went searching for something. And I didn't know what I was looking for. I was looking for something that would be fulfilling for me. And went online. And I was looking for something holistic. Not that I'd ever really had any experience. <clears throat> and then I put it on hold again. And then the who hit the fan? this particular day in February and that was it. It was a straw that broke the camel's back and went searching again. I found a Reiki course. And that Reiki course I did that weekend. That was Wednesday, that weekend. And the activation with that was if somebody had told me what I'd experienced, it changed my life forever in the most blessed way it opened my heart it opened my connection to spirit i became aware of three spirit guides that weekend there was just if somebody had told me i thought they were absolutely bonkers and that was really just the tip of the iceberg but although it was really out there it didn't feel out there it just felt my truth um and going through the process of Reiki, working on somebody's energy, my hands are doing their thing, and this is exactly what happened. My hands just moved what they needed to do. And my desire and passion to know and understand more was just so fired up, and I was like a sponge. And I, the day after the retreat, I told him the marriage was over. And I didn't just tell him it was over from a place of, nah. I was actually calm. It was my truth and I was able to say it. So didn't mean it was an easy ride because it was interesting. <laughs> <coughs> so it's been on a bit. I met Sue a year later when she came to visit and our relationship was fantastic and we just clicked. And, you know, and to be honest, I learn as much from you as you learn from me and that's we all do we are each other's teacher we're not none of us are just the guru we're just all part of the same and we all bring and share the wisdom and the love from our own experiences and we're all a gift we're all a gift so we did this angel intuitive and we have an amazing experience i will share this little tidbit though about that trip we were the day we were leaving. I'd gone upstairs in this place we were renting. Well, I'm not the same. <laughs> and Sue was downstairs, and then she started singing at the top of her voice. And I'm not a good singer. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> she was singing Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. <laughs> 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 Have you heard of Reader's Inn? No, 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 the no, day we were no, leaving. No, but she was. It, she was bringing my mum through. She'd already brought her through the day before. This is as your journey was yeah. starting to come open up. Yeah. yeah. But her singing that at the top of her voice, I thought, it's my mum. <laughs> Thank you, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> it was just beautiful. I was like, do you know why I was singing that? <laughs> 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 the idea to start this in humanity and just every day or two I post a thought that came to my mind first thing in the morning I just sit there and just, I just sit there and it just goes and every time I got there at the same sort of time it just happened and that went on from the December through to March April and then it was just like this could be a book because I'm writing these, in fact, they were becoming put every day. So then I had to go back, find them all, <laughs> copy and paste them 
onto a Word document. And so that's how that came about. Um, and the writing of it was easy. The writing of it was easy. Yeah. yeah. And who did you go with to publish? Was it Balboa Press? It was Balboa Press. Yeah. And that Balboa was Press. Very expensive. I think it was uh, about 3000 or something. Um, but I'm really grateful for it, but I'm not going down that path with my next book. Um, it did take care of knowing what to do to actually get it put together. But I had a, a big challenge in the formatting of it and the editing of it. And it took months and months. Did you nearly give up? <laughs> I did. Um, can I just borrow sure. a minute? As you can see, the layout's done sort of in a specific way. So it's not book by format. And when it came back, it would first edit. It came back and they'd lined it up completely wrong. And that actually was my lack of experience in using formatting. formatting. I didn't have a clue. I thought I put it all in the right places because it looked like that when I typed it. But the way I moved it to where it needed to be, it was just like, it was awful. I actually didn't touch it for about two or three months. And then a um, friend of the family came around one day and I was talking about my frustration with it. And he, gave me a few tips and suddenly I felt right I can do this and I had to go from beginning to end to re put it in the format that would work. Also I thought. <laughs> so finally ready for it to go off. It went off and I was so so happy, so excited. And I did a missed call from them to let um there was other stuff along the way. And when I, they told me that they, there was a message left that they'd done it and I'll be getting it through. And it came back and it was the same. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Elizabeth, <laughs> where did you? I lost, oh, I lost yeah. the plot. Yeah. I was <laughs> so angry. I was. I remember I'd, that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd been out all day and it was in the evening and it was just like, I was, I was spitting. <laughs> I had it where I was living then, I had a studio and I was in the studio and it was just like, I wanted to throw something and I was just like, cry. I'm not doing, that's it, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done, gone, done. Um, and then I sort of observed myself a bit. <laughs> well, okay, what's going on here? What's this really about? And thank you to Don Miguel Ruiz and the four agreements. Um, I actually wasn't aware I'd gone through that process <laughs> um, about being impeccable with your word, don't take things personally, don't make assumptions. And always be your best. So what pro happened then? I, I was just like I couldn't speak. I couldn't go in. My teenage daughters were in the house. And I sort of went to my bedroom. Then I came back out. And I just couldn't bring myself back down for a, a good while. But then when I did. I realized that I was taking it personally. I was making an assumption about what happened. I didn't know this till the following day. But what happened was I was able to put myself in a, to breathe and come back to, I actually, I've got to do this. I'm not going to not write. I'm not going to not finish this. And then I sat down that night and I, I wrote a letter to them. And I stood in my power with my words. It wasn't from an emotional place. So I said, and I said, you know, I really need you to get back to me as soon as you possibly can because I can't understand why this has happened. Blah, 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 blah. 
anyway. And I got a missed call later. I got a call the next that same the following morning. It was just after I dropped my daughter off the, the school bus. And this lady was apologizing profusely because they'd used the wrong script manuscript. They used the original accent <laughs> and not that one. And she was falling over herself with apologies. So it had actually changed around. But the gift in this, all of it, all of it, was for me to trust in myself, not make an assumption that what you think is happening is happening. Mm -hmm. Because in my head, it was just this huge drama. I actually didn't have to do anything else. But in my head, and sometimes it isn't as simple as that, but very often what we assume is playing out and happening in our lives, in every, every element of our life, we make a story about it and then we sort of eat humble pie because that, that wasn't what it was. <laughs> and let me say, I'm hearing from everyone, if we go through that self-talk and sometimes, I know I've told myself before, well, this is a sign it's not meant to happen, I'm not, meant, not supposed to do it, and then you give up. Yeah. Instead of finding out why. Yeah. 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 There's hidden gems in everything. Mm -hmm. And I suppose one of the best things to ask in anything when we're triggered, when we're acting out, and I certainly was triggered. <laughs> um what is there for me to learn here? <laughs> what do I need to learn from this? And it isn't it's very often nothing like what we think it is. It's not the world being against us. It's not that you're rubbish at doing whatever it is. It's me thinking, that's it. I'm really no good at this. I've really stuffed this up. Um, and even if I had got it wrong, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So eventually we got there. And, and here it is. And here it is. And so there's another one in motion. And so does it, yeah. So where to from here? Rosalind, the next book is being published tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's had a bit of a it's stalled a bit. Okay. Um I suppose almost within a few months of me waking up and going on the path that I did twelve years ago, I knew that my biggest purpose on this planet is around assisting people around forgiving. So my my next book's Ultimate Forgiving. It actually was going to be ultimate ultimate forgiveness, but it's it's actually ultimate forgiving, a pathway to freedom, peace, and joy. So I started it last year, and I was meant to be at the Enlighten Adelaide Festival last year, and I was going to be doing a talk on forgiveness. And I had planned later last year, so in November, I was going to run a retreat on ultimate forgiveness. And then I had two major things happen just after I'd had this freedom in my life <laughs> for the first time, or my perceived freedom. I've always had freedom, but I never, I never recognized it. I've always, in the last 40, in the last 42 years I've always had one or other of my daughters living with me so I won't say dependent in but living at home and the programs I've been running and living on that's where the oh, um, that's where the stories played out where I didn't have my freedom so I had this space where I had four, it was going to be six months, of my middle daughter following her passion, incredible young woman who doesn't fit in the box, and working with primates in the sanctuary. Um, 
And the day after my day before my birthday last year, I got a phone call from her telling me she's she'd been feeling suicidal. And I talked to her and we sort of managed to sort of move through things and it became clear she needed to come home. So she came home in the middle of the April. Um, and it was a real challenge to see your daughter in such a space. Um, so every I put things on hold to focus on helping her, her yeah. and to get her power back. And she she was very she's she's not so open to the work I do, and that's that's perfectly fine. But we were blessed that she found the universe brought to her a psychologist who worked much more expansively and helped her with her healing through shifting old story. Um, so that was amazing. So she was just starting to come back. But at one point she was unable, well, at different times, she'd freeze or she couldn't even walk or she couldn't even talk because of what was going on in here just froze her. But she moved through and progressed really, really well. She was amazing. She's inspired me so much. And then just before the Enlighten Adelaide Festival, <clears throat> my eldest daughter, who's over here, her her dad, who I was with from when I was 15 till I was 37, had a cycling accident in the UK and broke his neck. Um, and he passed away 10 days later so it was a huge it was it was bless him he he actually gifted me so much in his passing that I didn't even know was there inside me I've never felt such rage around unresolved stuff in our relationship on my um, unresolved guilt and shame around different things that I didn't step into um, my power when I was in that relationship. And both of my relationships, I was very passive, very quiet, very nice, didn't like to be angry. I liked people to like me, to do all the nice things to be liked. And I was a I was aware of that in these last 12 years, but not that I hadn't resolved what I hadn't resolved. So consequently, my book that's in process <laughs> had some other elements for me to really address. Um, yeah, absolute overwhelming rage and feeling, realizing that it was emotions that I buried and hidden all my life. And the gift of it is that through what I've understood and learned through that, it it will expand on what my my book is yep. and going to be. But essentially, the book is about realizing that there's nothing to forgive. Yeah, all right. And it's taking helping people take them on the journey mm. to come to that place, and they may not. But even if they go so far down the path, yeah, that's it. Stay, stay away to heaven, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Every book that's written is another step up to heaven. So, um, thank you very much, dear Rosalind. Books are available for twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Um, it's not. I'd, this isn't a selling gig, but it's just because no, we're no, here. No. It's like, well, if you want one, there we go. Yeah. And they're also on I have them. Um, I believe so. <laughs> Book depository. Okay. Um, but they are, it's much more expensive to do it through that. I sell them for less than what Balboa made me do the recommended retail price. I wasn't happy about it and I couldn't do anything about it. So, just a heads up on that, they do it page by page because there's 365, well, actually, a bit more than that because of the, the introduction. Of they charge page by page, so consequently the retail price is meant to be $32.95. And it didn't sit with me. So 
So the twenty dollars today. Yeah. So thank you very much. Any questions for Rosalind? I have a question. Yeah. Sure. You said that you are moving to a different publisher or a different way of publishing for the next book. Yeah. You didn't say what that was. I don't know. Yet. <laughs> I don't know yet. But as it happens, the last. You know, when you when you're ready, that the different things appear mm -hmm. synchronistically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've wanted to reconnect to my book, <coughs> but I I didn't feel it. I wasn't ready, and I thought I'm not going there until I can feel mm -hmm. that it's there. Mm -hmm. And I just kept just saying, I, I really want to reconnect to it. I really want to do that but there's something in me that's not allowing me to do that mm -hmm. and then a few weeks ago a couple of months ago in my newsfeed someone said that about something came up with their newsfeed and they didn't know where it came from this lady called emily gower who's in brisbane you heard of her yes. you connected to yes. to her pages beautiful beautiful soul um it was actually a competition for Gower Publishing for a for a book. Oh, I'll I'll do this, and but it wasn't just about that that drew me. Through the competition, you had to do things like answer these different things, and the authenticity and the heart centeredness. It was it wasn't about just getting people to come. It was deeper than that. So uh, I didn't win it, and that's all wonderful, that's all good, but what, what happened then was that I then saw something, she posted a, a little video, and she's done Dr. John Martini's work. She actually does his work with him, and she's just about to release a book imminently, and he's done the preface for her. Um, so something about her that I was drawn to, and things kept coming up on my newsfeed that she had posted. She got me to get my tax done. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> She's a clever lady. She was very clever. Um, but she also offered a copy of her book about writing, being an author, becoming an author. And I wish I'd brought it with me to show you, but I forgot to bring it. Anyway, I've got to wrap you it just need. Oh, sorry, because yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll talk quickly. So if you <laughs> want to look her up, really, I highly recommend her, Emily Gower. Um, I've just started doing her mastermind group, which is thirty nine dollars a month to I'm promote her. Mm -hmm. Hi, Emily. Mm -hmm. um, but truly, if you if you're looking for some sort of support in pulling things together in that way, it, she's a brilliant resource. I went away for five days and did a couple of things of hers, and the information I've gleaned from that to help me has been amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rosalind. I'll let you go sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely story to share with everyone there. Okay, so we are going to um, break in a moment, but before we do, um, all the beautiful guest speakers, thank you all. Can we just give them another round of applause? Thank you very much. So please stay around. So in a moment when we get up, if you can just kind of stack all the chairs so that we've actually got some room to move, um, the flyers and bits and pieces on the chairs for you to take away. And if you do want to purchase a book um, from uh, Pauline, yes. And just before I forget, we've got um, a surprise for six lucky people because all of our speakers have donated a book today. And Mary has also donated a art therapy one, class one on one individual session. individual session so if you feel underneath your chair and if you've got a sticker under there you're a winner so there's six winners so thank you to our guest speakers Can we collect your prize? Sorry, sorry, just 
It's just a moment, sorry. Um, Mark will be back shortly if anybody has missed out on a chai latte, but there's still some, some food. And 